Today we're going to learn how to animate random movements to any property in Blender without creating any single keyframe. Something really useful to create random animations. So let's keep this cube as an example and let's open this and go to Graph Editor. Let me just open, clicking here, another tab to have the timeline. So here I have the controls to go to the beginning and the end. Okay, so first we need to create a keyframe. So select the object, right click and go to Insert Keyframe and decide what you want to animate. Let's start with the location. So what I want is to create a random movement going up and down in the Z axis. So let's open here, we have the three axes and I'm going to hide X and Y. So how we can animate this randomly? First, you need to open this tab. If you don't see this tab, press N. N to show or to hide. And now we have to go here in modifiers. If you don't see modifiers, it's because you don't have this selected. Look, if I click out, for example, now I click here, now it doesn't appear. So to appear, remember, select the property and now go to modifiers. If I press the spacebar, you can see that we don't have any animation. But now if we go to add modifier, here we have different modifiers, but today we are going to see only noise. So select noise and look what happens. Now we have a wave that it's noise that basically creates an animation to the Z axis. So if I press spacebar, we have this random animation. So how this works? Here we have different values to play with. If you want more ups and down in this property, what we have to do is to increase the strength. So if I click and drag, now I'm increasing the wave. So that means it will go further up and down. Let me zoom out. And if I increase more, you can see what I'm talking about. If you want to slow down the animation, so don't have too much peaks, we have to click in a scale. So if we increase the scale, we are stretching the wave. So it's more slow. Calm down. If you want more velocity, decrease the scale. Later, you have the offset. Basically, is to change the position of the wave, of the noise. And you have the face to change the shape. And we have depth that basically adds detail to the wave, to the noise. Look. And we have finally influence that basically allow us to say we want less noise or more noise. One is the maximum, but we can decrease this. So we are decreasing the influence of the noise. And if you leave it like zero, the noise disappears. So you can set up your values and just say, I want 50% of the influence. Or I want 100%. So this is how it works. And now we have another interesting option here. Restrict frame rate. So click here and open this and scroll down. Here we have a start and end. And now our noise disappears. Why? Because the start and the end is when start and finish the noise. However, when we activate this, the end says zero. So that's why we don't have noise now. If you want the noise to be until the end, we have to put the same number, 250. So with this, you can cut at the beginning or at the end. For example, if I want to finish the noise at 220, I add 220. And now here we don't have noise. It's flat. It stops. If I want to cut it at the beginning, for example, at 20 frames, I add 20 frames. So at the beginning, we don't have noise. Easy, right? And later we have this blend in, blend out. This is like an After Effects easy in, easy out. So if you want to make, for example, the beginning more smooth, just click in blend in. And if you drag, you are making more smooth the beginning. And if you want to do the same at the end, just click in blend out. So now it's more smooth at the end. 
And with this trick, we can look this. How? We add 0 and 250, or at the end of your composition, and you can smooth the beginning and the end to make the transition, the loop, more smooth. For example, let's add 5 and 5. And now, when we are close to the end and press spacebar, when it reaches the end, we don't notice the cut, because the end and the beginning is really smooth. Actually, here it's not perfect, so let me add another frame, or let me try blending, something like that. So it's really easy to loop an animation. You can play with these values to make it more smooth or more perfect, as you want. And remember, you can add this random animation to any property. For example, let me delete these keyframes. I'm going to press N and clear keyframes. And now I'm going to select the object and insert a keyframe in rotation. So I want a random notation in the X axis. I'm going to hide these ones and select X, go to modifier and noise. So we have this random animation. I want more rotation, then I need to increase the scale. I want it slower, so let's increase the scale. Maybe I want more slow and less strength. So you get the idea. Let's delay these keyframes. And let's create a keyframe in the scale. So insert keyframe in scale. And let's play with the Z axis. So for example, I select this, go to modifiers, noise. And now let me clean the rotation. Now we have a random animation in the Z scale axis. If you want to increase this, let's increase in a strength. Maybe I don't want so fast, slower, maybe I want less influence. So you can see how it's really easy to animate any property with this feature. And if you want to loop this, remember, let's add this, 250, and let's add, for example, I don't know, 5, 5, something like that. And here, should be looped. Sometimes it's not perfect, so you can play with more smooth at the beginning and trying different values.